Hey y'all, hi. So I keep a Pinterest board for fashion inspiration. And from time to time, I like to go through, sit back and kind of look at it from a little bit of a distance and ask myself, what is my Pinterest board telling me about what I actually want to put on my body? And how can I boil that down, crystallize it into something actionable? That's what I'm gonna be doing in today's video. I'm gonna share with you some of the images that I've pinned lately, outfits that are inspiring me. And I'm gonna talk about what I've learned from my own Pinterest board about what I can do to act on that inspiration. So there's a little list of things that I can do without shopping. And then there's another little list of pieces that I might be interested in acquiring, especially if I can find them at a thrift shop. If this is your first time to my channel, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad that you clicked on it. My name is Hannah. This is a beauty channel mostly, but I'm branching out into some fashion content. I just love talking about aesthetics and the impact that they can have on our lives, but I try to do that without promoting overspending. If you enjoy yourself watching this one, I hope you will choose to subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Okay, so when I have one of these sessions where I sit down with my fashion Pinterest board and I kind of look at the big picture that it's painting, the first thing I do is to look for relationships between outfits that I've pinned. So I ask myself, am I pinning the same thing over and over, essentially? And then once I've kind of gotten a handle on what it is about a handful of images that has caused me to pin each one of them, like what the connecting factor is, what that X factor is, once I've articulated that to myself, then I can and say, well, can I do that without shopping? Like, can I build outfits around that principle using what I already have? And in many cases, the answer is yes. So one of the resounding yeses today when I started looking over all of my recent pins was in response to several images that I've pinned of a slightly different take on the layering concept. So I've talked at this point ad infinitum about layering a chunky knit over a floral maxi dress or an otherwise printed maxi dress. This isn't that. It's like a departure from that. I realized that over the past month or two, I've pinned a lot of images of models and, I don't know, fashion people wearing a very casual top, like a printed t-shirt, a band tee, a vintage tee, a logo sweatshirt, a hoodie, like that kind of thing. That as the layering piece over the kind of floral or summer skirt, like floaty summer skirt that I've been using to do that chunky knit over a maxi thing. One standout, someone on the street wearing an Anina Bing hoodie. And you know, my absolute favorite sweatshirt, like lounging around the house sweatshirt is an Anina Bing sweatshirt that has similar qualities. But it's that layered over like a voluminous black maxi skirt that has quite a lot of body. This makes me realize that usually when I'm executing that layered look, I tend to think of it as something a little bit more polished, like I'm aiming for or a minimalist fashion, maybe slightly avant-garde, but maybe could also even work for like the office or for going out to a nice dinner. Like I'm aiming at this sort of mid-level of formality with that layering look. I haven't really thought about dressing that concept down by using a grungier or a less formal top half. But looking over the board, there are a bunch of images. A graphic t-shirt over a midi dress. I just love this look. I mean, that could be a midi skirt or a slip dress that is layered over. Over, a t-shirt with printed writing on it and like a zip up hoodie with a pleated maxi skirt that goes all the way to the floor. I've been pinning images along these lines, but I've never done this. I've never taken one of my sundresses or maxi skirts and put like my Anina Bing hoodie on top of that. I think I would have previously thought, oh no, that's mixing vibes a little bit. It's mixing like a slightly more polished, formal, going somewhere vibe, putting oneself together vibe with a staying home, lounge around the house vibe. But I love the idea of mixing the two because it works in both directions. I feel like this kind of mixing will encourage me to wear my sundresses and maxi skirts as loungewear, like wear them around the house. Most of what I do is sit around the house working. You know what I mean? Like most of what I do is work at home, but not go anywhere. Most of what I do is to not go anywhere. So anything that gives me a little opening into wearing my beloved clothes, like my best clothes around the house and feeling like it sort of suits is a great idea. But also I feel like this kind of gives me the ticket to wearing my Anina Bing sweatshirt out in a slightly more elevated way to the farmer's market, to the museum. It just makes it much more fashion and a little bit less loungewear and I'm here for that too.
So I'm definitely going to try this in the coming weeks, and I totally don't need to buy anything to do it. Another undeniable standout theme in my recent pins that I didn't notice that I was pinning over and over again until I sat down with my board and started looking over and looking for patterns, and also something that I don't do, and actually kind of along similar lines. Sneakers, like everything from a slightly fashion sneaker through to a total workout sneaker, dad sneaker. Sneakers with socks, with skirts and dresses. Once in a while in my life, I've pushed myself to try to do this. I always feel like I'm not quite cool enough, especially with socks. I'll do it with the sneakers that I have that I wear without socks, where it's just like a slip on, looks a little bit more like a shoe, like a regular shoe, a non-sneaker shoe. But to full on wear like a sock, an ankle sock with a sneaker with one of these looks, it's like a layered look with a skirt or just with a sundress. I have never pinned so many images of people doing this and I've never loved so many images of people doing this, and I think that I might be getting to the point in my life where I am confident enough to do it without feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm a dork. The people around me don't understand that this is fashion. I can't pull this off. Who do I think I am? You know, I think I can do it. I think I can do it and enjoy it, and I just haven't thought to. I haven't thought to take the leap. Whenever I'm wearing a flowy skirt or a skirt of any kind, I wear boots or sandals or something that just has, again, a tiny bit more polish. So similarly, it's like mixing high and low. It's taking something that has, to me, a skirt inherently feels like a little bit elevated. And there are just all of these images of people wearing skirts, like dragging them down and grunging them down with sneakers and graphic tees and, and hoodies and sweatshirts. And I think that it, it is something that I want to try, specifically on this bullet point with the sneakers. And I think I'm going to even bite it and try the sneakers with socks. I'll, try, I'll put it on Instagram. You can let me know if you think it's worked or if I should back off of that one. Okay. And and thirdly, I found myself saving all of these images, or I didn't find myself doing it. I did it. And then when I returned to the board and started looking for the big picture, I saw that I had done it. I saw that I had pinned a lot of images of black and white outfits. And you know, I love a monochromatic outfit. And I've talked about this a lot. I have a lot of black clothing. I tend to wear all of that clothing, that black clothing in all black outfits. I have some white cream and neutral, like otherwise pale neutral clothing. And I tend to try to wear it sort of all together because I try to honor my long line. I don't like to have that like cut line across the middle where it's like white on top, black on bottom. But here I am with all of these pins of people wearing black and white, but I feel like in a way that does work. And I think in a lot of the cases it's working because the top is sort of long. So a very oversized white shirt that's sort of tunic length with black pants or black leggings underneath still kind of honors the long line line because the shirt itself is actually kind of as long as a mini dress. It's not a cutting line right at the midsection. Likewise, this amazing image of a voluminous white cotton skirt with a black sweater, I think, that's kind of tight, but it's very long. It comes almost all the way down to the hips and kind of flares out as the skirt provides body underneath it, which is something I would ordinarily not do. I would think like, oh, it's awkward. It's not fashion. It's not working, but I love the way that it looks here. So it's just something I know about myself. I'm resistant to wearing black top with with pale or white pants or vice versa. And it's interesting to note and encouraging me in a new direction to note that I've actually pinned a handful of images that show people doing that thing that I don't often do. And it makes me want to embrace it a little, play around with it and see what I can make of it. And again, I definitely don't need to go shopping to do that because I have some white garments and some black garments. I just don't usually mix them together. So those are the three themes that I spotted on my Pinterest board on which it will be effortless for me to act and totally free for me to act. There are a couple of things that I ended up saving over and over and over again. And when I look at them and think about what it would take for me to emulate them, I think I don't really have anything. Part of what attracts me to this is that there's something in it that's new for me or that would be new for me, but that maybe feels a little bit risky. Like I'm not totally sure that I'll like it. It's something with which I'd like to experiment. And in that case, what I want to do is go straight to a thrift shop, not a designer consignment shop, you know, not like an upscale resale shop, but a thrift shop thrift shop where I might be able to dig out something that helps me experiment with the trend and isn't going to cost a lot as long as I'm willing to spend the time searching, which is something that from time to time I quite enjoy. So this next list is a list of things that I've decided based on my Pinterest board I might be interested in thrifting specifically. And the next time I go to a thrift shop, I'll go with this list in hand. 
So I saved a bunch of images of tonal monochromatic outfits that are all white. Voluminous white pants or really long white skirts with white sweaters or crisp white button downs. White on white on white or cream on white. And they tend to be oversized silhouettes and what looks like natural fibers like cotton and linen. I have, as I said, a couple of white pieces in my wardrobe. I can think of two white cotton tops, a cream colored cotton skirt, and a couple of cream colored thin merino wool tops. But not much, especially on the bottom half when it comes to that really bright white that gives this impression of summer and crispness that I'm so drawn to right now that I realize when I look at my Pinterest board, I'm so drawn to. For me right now, suddenly out of the blue, tonal whites, like quite bright whites and creams, seems like the best thing I possibly could be wearing, like the best outfit idea ever going into this spring. And I just don't have a robust collection of of actual white clothing in my wardrobe. I just know that I don't. I don't have any white pants, for example. So one solution to this, right, could be to go to high-end minimalist brands, like designer brands that make this kind of voluminous, slouchy clothing and often do make them in white and buy some white clothes and spend like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on like white skirts and white pants. But I don't want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, I'm trying to buy less this year. I'm trying to spend less on clothes. And I just certainly at this moment do not feel like I have the hundreds and hundreds of dollars to spend just to satisfy this one urge. It's just a straight up no when it comes to like thinking about pursuing that kind of path. And two, white clothing is a little bit of a dicey investment, which is why I don't have very much of it to begin with. It just stains more easily. You know, it gets dingy more easily than other things. When I am wearing a light colored or a white top, I will literally change out of it before I eat dinner. Like if we're eating dinner at home. If we're having something with a red sauce or a curry, I will literally say to Joe, I'll be right back. I'm going to go change into something that can't get ruined by this sauce. That's how much of a risk it can be to have a beautiful, expensive white piece of clothing. However, if I were to find a white cotton skirt with an elastic waist, just like a simple white cotton skirt at a thrift shop for $5, I could get it and wear the butt out of it and not worry too much about how crushed I'll be if it gets dirty. I mean, it might be disappointing if it got a stain on it because it wouldn't be as nice anymore, but it wouldn't feel like I just flushed $150 down the toilet. Less precious, you know? And when it comes to shirting, like white cotton button downs, that kind of thing. The world is awash in crisp white shirting. It's the kind of thing you can definitely find at a thrift shop, especially if you venture into the menswear department. Because what I'm interested in are these sort of simple silhouettes. It seems like something I might be able to find. So the next time I go to a thrift shop, I'm really excited to go scanning for white clothing in natural fibers that I'll feel really comfortable wearing and just seeing, just seeing what I might find. Because I know from my Pinterest board that I'm really interested in combining and layering voluminous whites. Okay, and the other thing theme that I've sussed out of my Pinterest board that I can't emulate using what's in my closet, but that I wouldn't want to spend a lot of money to experiment with. I'm grouping a couple of things together. I've saved a handful of images of a layering technique with like an oversized sweater or t-shirt over a silk slip, like a, a silk slip dress or silk skirt. I've also saved images that look like that, but the skirt underneath is sequins. And one amazing image of someone wearing a long gray sweater that it's it comes like down to mid thigh, basically a mini dress. And then the skirt underneath is totally sheer black lace peeking out from underneath. Basically, the layering technique, but with the bottom half, the skirt, being made of a more delicate, more formal, more textured, interesting fabric. My skirts and dresses tend to be, again, cotton, linen. They tend to be really sturdy pieces that I can wear over and over, that I can wash and wear, wash and wear. I also saved a handful of images of tulle dresses and skirts as layering pieces. For some reason, I'm feeling really drawn to that. I don't really have tulle, even though I love the way that it looks because it's usually made out of plastic. It's just not very breathable. It's not the kind of fabric that I've gravitated towards when it comes to collecting forever pieces over the years. But I'm finding myself, apparently, based on my Pinterest board, deeply interested in layering some of my more organic, hardy fabrics 
over some of these cheekier fabrics. And again, I'm not going to go out buying like a, a brand new sequined skirt. It's just not in the cards for me right now. When it comes to silk slip dresses, that kind of thing, silk is pretty delicate. You know, it shows water stains when you sweat on it. It wrinkles very easily. These days when it comes to daily wear clothing, it's not the kind of thing that I'm investing in. And also a slip dress, like that kind of thigh clinging silhouette isn't usually something that works for me. It usually has to be really oversized and drapey to work. I don't like things clinging to the sides of my legs. So these like 90s style slip dresses that are slinky, if I were to buy one just off the rack, like buy one from Nordstrom's or something, I almost guarantee just based on the clothes I've tried on over the years that I wouldn't like wearing it. I wouldn't like how it looks on me. Or I would only want to wear it layered underneath a very long sweater. But I don't want to buy something brand new at full price that was just recently manufactured only to wear it underneath other things as a layering piece. That's more the kind of thing that I would acquire, again, at a thrift shop as an experimental piece. A little $5 slip dress that I can just put on with my oversized sweaters at home and see if I like it. And even though slips and slip dresses and lingerie type things in that silhouette at thrift shops usually tend to be synthetic satin, poly, basically polyester made of plastic, once in a while you can find a gem mixed in there. A little silk one that slipped through the cracks. That's the kind of thing that I'll go looking for the next time I'm thrift shopping. A real silk slip dress or a slip that's oversized enough on me that I feel like it can work with my body type. Any kind of tulle or lace or sequined skirt or dress that I could mess around with. Layering underneath t-shirts as we go into spring. Layering underneath sweaters maybe next fall. Not too much of an investment. Just a little experiment to see if these images that I've been saving to my Pinterest board of these exciting fabrics layered underneath other things really represent something that I want to emulate my personal style. So that's it. Just a quick recap. The things that I can do without shopping are one, to put a casual or sport top over a skirt. Two, try wearing sneakers with socks with some of my skirts and dresses. And three, to combine black and white in my outfits more often. And the things that my Pinterest board is telling me I might be interested in thrifting are one, white and cream colored clothes for tonal white outfits. And two, layering skirts in unusual fabrics like silk, tulle, sequins, and lace. I really quite enjoy enjoyed this rendezvous with my Pinterest board. I feel like it taught me a lot. I'm very excited both to go thrifting and to dig into my closet and see what else I can make of it. Thank you all so much for being subscribed, those of you who are. Thank you especially to those of you who are always commenting on my videos and liking my videos. And I appreciate all of you for watching and I hope that you are all taking extra good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective versions of yourselves as you do your work in the world.